What up, guys? Welcome to a new episode of GTA Series Video's Tips and Tricks. I'm Gary7MT, and today we're going to analyze the new business opportunity in Los Santos and Blaine County, added with the latest GTA Online update, After Hours. With this video, our intent is to give you info on costs, wages, investments, upgrades, time, and more in order to allow you to make the best choices and decide if you want to be an active part of this new business. We took time with every new aspect added by the DLC in depth in order to give you the best guide possible, which has also been made possible thanks to some members of the GTA community like Tez Funds 2, Cunby, and many others from GTA forums and Reddit who provided fundamental data that will be shown in this video. Unique from all other businesses, in After Hours, you're able to do almost everything alone and in a private session. The only thing restricted to public sessions are the selling. The buyer wants this stuff dropped on a barge out at sea. You'll drive the goods to the rendezvous point and airlift it over there. You can fly, right? Listen, this is uh, Tony Prince. I'll cut straight to the chase. This is the starting point for this DLC. After receiving Tony's call, we're good to go. Let's start by purchasing the nightclub. If you're unsure whether the business is good for you, start with a low-key location. One isn't recommended over another. Generally, the rule is to select one near a highway or on the north of the city in order to have fast access to the other half of the map. Don't go crazy on the customization and keep the storage facility as it is. There's always time in the future to change everything making it stylish or bigger. With just a little more than a million bucks, you'll be the new owner of a nightclub with an underground hub for managing your criminal activities. Once you've bought everything you need, head to your new property to enjoy Tony's presentation with Laszlo, the real star of this new update. Hello? If you pull that pregnancy pity party on me one more time, I will lose my cool, okay? Tony, your friend's here. When the cutscene ends before clocking dollars, you're forced to complete three setup missions. The first two missions are to recover speakers for the nightclub and three staff members. After that, you'll need a DJ, and with him on board, you're ready to earn some money to break even. Before delving into more complex explanations about the time and effort needed to make a profit, allow us, in the interest of clarity, to split the activities in after hours into two main businesses, the nightclub and the hub. Let's start with the nightclub. Players in the club can enjoy activities like getting drunk and blacking out, only to find themselves on Mount Chiliad nearly nude, to becoming a new member of the Epsilon program, to spraying expensive champagne on friends and NPCs. You can also dance for dollars, unlock an exclusive t-shirt and gold trophy for your office if you dance to the DJ for six cumulative hours. All these activities will help you obtain the new rewards added with this update. As far as business activities go, everything can be done in private sessions in the following ways. There are two ways to clock dollars, nightclub earnings and jobs. Club earnings are based on the popularity meter. Every 48 minutes, a day in GTA Online, a specific amount is placed in the club's safe depending on how well known your club is. Keep your promotion maxed and you'll make $10,000 a day and have access to the most expensive booze. Keep the popularity over 90% for a little more than 11 hours and you'll unlock the gold hotspot trophy on Tony's desk, the one shaped like a star next to Luis's picture. The safe has a maximum capacity of 70k, so that means that if you keep your promotion full all the time, every 6 hours you have to collect the money, otherwise you'll lose your next pay. Let the bar run dry and you'll find yourself with a mere 100 bucks income a day instead. So when the promotion bar starts to lower, refill it by completing a nightclub promotion mission, an easy solo mission that normally takes from 3 to 5 minutes to complete or kill a player in an active promotion to gain some for yourself. These missions don't pay that much, an average of $2,000, but every penny brings us closer to breaking even. There's a five minute delay from the end of one promotion to another. There are also a fair selection of missions available randomly for the player split into three main categories tied to the character talking to us before and after the job. 
The first type of mission are Tonys and always involve directly promoting your club or ruining someone else's. He may ask the player to fly on a buzzard and drop flyers, put posters up around the city, steal or recover a stolen mule full of booze, destroy Bahama Mama supply trucks, or force a change of mind in property developers by smashing their cars. The second type of jobs are Laszlo's, and their themes involve VIPs visiting the club. The four types are reach a VIP who has been arrested, jump in the transporter, lose your warranted level, then finally take the VIP to your club. I want to hear everybody give it up! Give me some whoop whoop! It's the one and only Jimmy Boston on the floor! Use Snapmatic pictures posted by the VIP to locate them. Reach their location and bring them to the club. <laughs> I can't believe it! She's here! Reach the VIP, lose the paparazzi, grab a second guest, and return to your club. And finally, reach a couple of not-so-well-known celebrities or clubbers and get them in the club. All right, the crew's all here. We're going to have some fun and get the brand out there while we're at it. Hey, take a pic. T tag me. Hashtag Laszlo. <laughs> I'm trending. Promotion type three are random missions for English Day. Unlike other promotion jobs, these aren't started by the player, but are randomly activated by the game through a call made by Dave. These missions' themes are favors asked by the resident DJ. Favors ranging from free a couple of kidnapped friends, recovering some classic stolen vinyl, or bring a group of friends to the club using a helicopter while keeping a low altitude because one of the guests doesn't like heights. You got them here, safe and sound. I'll let Solomon know. Thanks. And this is more or less all you can do with the business activities part of the After Hours update but there's still a little more. Like any other business, the nightclub can be attacked too, always by the game, not by other players. There are two different kinds of raids. One's tied to the nightclub, the other affects the hub. Let's look at the first kind. Punks, thieves, poor people. They, they came in here and stole some bags and phones and stuff, okay? You know, I, I would have stopped them, but you know, I'm, I'm a dancer, I'm not, I'm not a fighter. Once attacked, you'll get a call from Laszlo informing you that some punks stole some bags, phones, and stuff. When the call ends, we have to find the thieves, kill them, recover the stolen property, and bring it all back to the club. There's no time limit, and if we fail, we'll just have to promote to change the opinion of the clientele about the venue. To avoid being raided, there is a simple trick that works for every business in GTA Online. Do not register as a VIP or CEO or MC. Just make sure to disband your organization when it's not needed and you don't have to worry about security anymore. You don't even need to buy the security upgrade. Almost 700,000 stays in your pocket. And speaking of the upgrades, the $475,000 staff upgrade is a worthwhile investment considering you'll have a third bartender and the loss of daily popularity is lower. And that's that for the nightclub, but not for all the activities of After Hours. Now, on to the other part of the business. As we said at the beginning, the actual name is Warehouse, but it's also called Basement and Storage. To avoid confusion with the warehouses from the finance and felony update in this video, we just gonna call it the hub, alright? Alright. So, the hub is a five floor max underground structure divided into two main areas, a personal garage in front and round rooms in the back with a terminal for managing the club and staff. Then there's a terminal room for the technicians and various other rooms where the contraband is kept. Again, if you're unsure if this business is for you, when buying the nightclub, leave the storage facility alone and don't buy any additional floors. There's always time near larger hub later. There are two ways to get the goods for the hub, business battles and technicians. The former is active. In other words, it requires your direct involvement. The second is a passive method that doesn't even require player interaction. Let's start with the business battles. They have one activation requirement, being in a session, even if an invite only, with at least three players active, moving or idling outside, not inside nightclubs, apartments, or any other interiors. You don't need to buy or start anything else. No technicians, businesses, or upgrades. 
You can have fun playing with your friends and others while filling your hub at no additional cost. A business battle is nothing more than a free mode event. It is set to start every 15 minutes or so like any free mode event, as long as players in the lobby haven't disabled them. The business battle consists of a mission where players have the chance to recover and store two crates of any random product in the hub. There are various scenarios Rockstar created for this event. In one, we gotta reach a laptop inside a police station and interact with it while trying to survive the cops to mark the location of a vehicle with the cargo on the map. Sometimes, the crates appear as duffel bags on maps after killing a bunch of targets for an unknown character or dropped from an airplane after clearing a drop zone of military and marking the area by throwing a flare. If the cargo is split into two bags or crates, recovering both may be difficult if you're solo. Sometimes it's better to go halvesies than to die. Several scenarios involve the full cargo stuffed inside one vehicle, starting with a car meeting in which we have to steal a Hermes. Another scenario requires finding a vehicle at the airport using a picture on your phone or reaching a trailer with a mamba inside that we must free by blowing off the trailer's doors. In another, we have to deal with a large group of Meriwether soldiers at Fort Zancudo or a fairly large group of professionals in the underground garage of the Union Depository. There's even a scenario involving Simeon's dealership where we have to hack the garage doors, kill all the mechanics and thugs, or outrun them, and collect a vehicle to take it to the nightclub. In all these missions, you can either use the supplied vehicle and bring it to the hub, getting both crates and a single drop, or destroy the vehicle to free the crates and then take them to the hub one by one. Obviously, if you're alone, keeping the original vehicle is the best choice. It's also worth noting that if you win 20 business battles, you will unlock a special gold trophy for your office. Quick, quick, you need to get to the warehouse, now! The same cops you've been paying off are about to try and steal all your product. You need to stop them. Like the club, the hub can also be raided, and while you may risk losing some clubbers, with the hub, you risk losing everything you have so far. As soon as the raid starts, police will surround the nightclub using grangers and a helicopter. To successfully defend your club, you have to kill all enemies around the club without dying, or otherwise you'll fail and all goods in the hub will be seized by the police. But, as we said before, to avoid being raided, there is a simple trick that works for every business in GTA Online. Do not register as a VIP, CEO, or MC, and make sure to disband your organization when it's not needed, and you won't have to worry about security anymore. You won't even need to buy the security upgrade, which just delays raids rather than eliminates them. With all that said, let's start crunching numbers with the other way to gain goods for the hub, technicians. Until now, we've discussed the active experience of this update. With the next part, we'll delve into the passive activities, where there is almost no player interaction. After the introductory mission, you'll automatically gain the first of five technicians that can work recovering goods to sell. Seven different types of goods can be stolen and stored in your hub by technicians. Cargo and shipments is the first category. Nothing really new here to see, just a fancy name for the CEO special cargo from the finance and felony update. Then we immediately have the five businesses added with the biker update. Printing and copying, organic produce, cash creation, pharmaceutical research, and South American imports. Last is sporting goods. Again, a new name identifying weapons produced by the bunker business from the gun running update. To have a technician to work on one of the previous categories, you have to own the related business and everything necessary to run it. In other words, if you want to put Johan to work on cargo and shipments, you need a CEO office and a warehouse. Which office and warehouse isn't important. You just need to own one of them. The same goes for the five businesses from bikers. With the necessary clubhouse or the bunker from gun running if you want your technician to collect sporting goods. 
Once you have the business, make sure to complete the setup mission or restart the activity if you closed it before. And that's all. You don't need to do resupply missions or upgrade these businesses. Nothing you can change in these activities will affect the production time or quality of the products. The finance and felony bikers and gun running activities only have to be open. So with that clear, let's bring on the tables. Like we said, there are seven categories of goods, each with a specific value per crate from a thousand bucks to 20 G's. Depending on the type of good, technicians require from 30 minutes to 4 hours of real time, not GTA time, to accrue one of these crates. That means, if you're looking to fill your hub without doing the business battles, you need to stay in the game for almost a week. Just like the staff upgrade helps you with the club, the equipment upgrade is useful for your hub because it improves the productivity of your warehouse technicians by allowing them to accrue goods faster, exactly half the time needed without the upgrade. It costs 1425000 but if you're trying to get the most out of this activity, it's an investment you need to make. And that's all you need to run the hub. Hire a technician and assign him to a specific job, then simply wait until you have enough and want to start selling. Okay, so we're selling some of the stuff that's been piling up downstairs and giving me a heart attack? Great. With the business running, let's move on to the next part of the activity, selling for profit. First of all, selling the goods is the only activity that requires a public session. So, before selling, try to find the right session for you or hire some help to avoid losing income. With that said, there are three different ways to sell your goods. You can sell your entire cargo, all the crates of a single type or a special order. Another difference from all other businesses is that it doesn't matter how many crates of goods you're going to sell. Everything gets loaded into a single vehicle. Selling missions are extremely easy to complete, from simply reaching a single delivery point to multiple deliveries with or without enemies to face, from thugs and vehicles to roadblocks to clear before completing the sale. Sometimes you'll need to use a cargo bob and deliver the packed vehicle on a barge near the helicopter. In another scenario, you need to use the app Sightseer to uncover the next drop-off. You'll always have a time limit, and the higher the value of the cargo, the more enemies will attack. Definitely buy the Mule Custom and the Pounder Custom, and in the Hub's Garage modify the delivery vehicles. Add the maximum armor and all the other customizations from the engine to the weapons. A fully customized Pounder Custom can resist almost anything during a selling mission. Later we'll talk more about tactics to make a profit. But for now, just know that the best way to sell goods is by collecting most of them and from time to time, choosing one of the three special orders available. These orders change over time, so don't wait to have enough to fulfill a specific special order because once you have what's needed, most of the time that order is not available anymore. The reason special orders are better than selling the entire hub or a complete set of goods is because you'll receive an additional bonus for a set a value that can go from a 5% more to 25% more. If you want to make some real money, top buyers will have specific shopping lists of products and they'll pay a premium if that whole order is filled. Most of the money goes to you, some goes to the club, of course. Take these three orders as an example. If you sell all the goods listed directly instead of by completing the special order, you'll gain a total of $759,500. If you instead satisfy three customers by selling them the exact same goods, you'll gain an additional bonus of $67,200. Okay, you made the sale. We finally got currency to run through the tills at this place. All anyone drinks nowadays is bottled fucking water. The profits minus the laundering fee will be in your account soon. As always, when selling, we have to remember our contacts cut. This means 10% of the profits Tony keeps for his services. If you sell $100,000 worth of product, you'll actually get $90,000 while Tony gets the remaining $10,000. Tony's cut, by the way, is capped at a maximum of $100,000. The high demand bonus is instead a 1% income boost over the selling price for every enemy in the session at the moment you do the deal. 
Again, if you sell a total of 100,000, you'll receive 1,000 more for every player not affiliated with your organization in the session. Now, let's run the numbers to find the best strategy for breaking even and starting to profit with the club. We could bombard you with tons of possibilities, including all the businesses, various venues, or just some, buying one or more floors and a lot more, but we won't do that. Follow the strategy step by step to gain the most money possible in the least time possible. Go with the cheapest nightclub at the pier in South LS for just over a million. Avoid customization, but buy all the storage floors for the hub. Reach the nightclub terminal, buy the equipment upgrade, and hire all the technicians. With that done, a little over 5 million will have disappeared already. But that's it if you've already bought the other businesses. If not, time to spend some more. The best strategy considers that the player owns five businesses. CEO office and warehouse, gun running bunker, and three activities from bikers counterfeit cash, methamphetamine lab, and cocaine lockup. If you're going to buy these activities only for the hub, don't spend a single penny on upgrading or supplying them. To keep your expenses at a maximum of 5.5 million, bringing the total investment to almost 10 million 600,000. Despite offering good bonuses, the special orders aren't the best way to make money. The most logical thing to do is work within a time limit. Three of the seven businesses create maximum product in 20 hours. If we set this moment as the reminder to sell everything created in the hub after having assigned the five technicians to cash creation, sporting goods, pharmaceutical research, cargo and shipments, and South American imports, we'll be able to sell everything for a total of 830000 more or less, minus Tony's 10%, meaning we'll gain around 750000 per sale. So, rounding up the numbers a little, we can make 750k from the hub every 20 hours. To pay for the investment, we have to repeat these sales exactly 15 times, obtaining a surplus of a little more than 650k. All this without considering that we can lower the expenses by winning the business battles or that there are the staff's wages to pay, nightclub, CEO assistant, bunker and bikers activities every 48 in-game minutes for a grand total of $18,000. In other words, just to repay the nightclub and business investments, there are a couple of weeks of keeping the game open 24-7. The good thing is that exactly like the bikers businesses, the hub activities are for those players that play the game a lot. The hub is the only really passive business in the game that doesn't require the player's attention at all. So jump in, especially if you bought the other businesses in the past. To wrap it up, at a first glance, the business opportunities added with the after hours update may seem boring and a little stale, while they actually give players chances to earn good money if they use the right strategy. Between the previous businesses and a passive use of the hub, we're easily looking at a million or more per day. Surely, to own everything and follow the best strategy, you'll need to spend a good chunk of your money. And if you're not an AFK player, reaching the break-even point will take a few weeks, if not months. So, if you're an active player, someone who still enjoys playing this game, you now have all the info needed to earn the best profit possible from the hub in this update. Otherwise, simply go for the nightclub. And that's it for this episode of Tips and Tricks. If you want to chat with us and other players or find someone to play GTA Online with, join us in our official Discord server or follow our social media pages on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. From the GTA Series Videos crew, this was Gary7MT, Kiflong.